2 d program this is 1d sorry <laughs> 2d is here probably take a longer time <laughs> I mean 2d probably will take a longer time okay jump up okay okay so this is a 2d program the 2d program separate in two uh, three major part first is setting the mesh the second is setting the range and the third is setting the parameters and the other additional function are here but the major three part is the material range setting, basic uh, sorry, mesh setting, material range setting, and the basic parameters. So these three steps must must be done in sequence. Okay. You cannot jump. You cannot go to basic parameter first. And then you, you need to go to the mesh setting first. So here is the 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 window of uh, mesh setting. Let me see if I have an example manip file. Mm, not much. <laughs> okay. All right. So maybe let's give a, a typical example like this. Well, this is a typical LED structure. And uh, there are six pairs of multiple quantum wire, but here we only use two pairs. Or oh, just save time. Yeah. So we say that there are two pairs of multiple quantum wells, 3 nanometer by 12 nanometers. And the dimension is like this. We have two, uh, two p-type contact and one n-type contact. And uh, we set a, a gen contact and source contact. Okay. And then this is a p-type layer. And uh, maybe we add a layer for... There's no EBL here, but maybe we can add a layer of EBL. So we say there's a 30 nanometer EBL. Okay, just like yesterday. And uh, let me think, anything else? Okay, so this is a dimension. The, the contact size, 10, a width is 10 micrometer. And uh, intrinsic region as impurity and the N gain. Okay, so the first thing is that we need to think about how many layers we need to set up. So we have a P type layer first, EBL second, less e less barrier, well barrier well, and then N type gain. Maybe we set up two layer. A three layer of n type gain because we need to edge down to here. So maybe we have one more layer here, one layer here, Sorry. and uh, we have additional layer in here. Okay, so I think totally we have a uh, nine nine regions. I regions, yeah, I think so. Okay. So let's say uh, this is zero in the white the white y axis. This is zero, and this is two micron in the y axis, and here there's a this is three micron. And uh, we have the quantum wheel start at 4 micron. Okay. So this is the 4 micron point. And the uh, peak gain layer, peak gain layer is 150 nanometer. Okay, so this, this is a very typical size. I think the even the N gain is a typical layer, buffer layer thickness. So we will edge down here, going to the three micron position, the the this this position, three micron position. Okay. So let's set up the mesh. In the mesh, in the beginning, uh, we need to set up the mesh. So we need to set up 
y no point and s no point. So in in this problem, we need to set up s first. So the total width of this case is like uh, 10, 60, 150. The total width is mm -hmm. 150. Is that right? One. 60, 60, yeah, 150 total weight, micro. Yes. Okay, let's say we don't leave any space here. Okay. Make it more great size. Okay, so the first point is 0, and then 10, and then 60, okay. and then 90, and uh, 140, and uh, 150. Okay. So let's set up the S point. So in the S point, we have how many points? I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six points. So we need to set up S point as a six point. The Chinese input is Charles. And the why? Why we have a nine layer? So that ten point. Nice session, 10 points. Okay, so we set up 10 points. Okay, so in the x direction, we need to set up a range. The first point is 0, the second point is 10 micron, and the third point is 60 micron, and the 90 micron, and then 140, and the 150. Is that clear? So that's the, the, the section point. 10, 60, 90. Yeah, let me put, put you can also write up a clearly right button and you can see it's 10, uh, 0, 10, 60, 90, 140, 150. Okay, all right, so we will leave this later. I just mm -hmm. tell you to set up this and then you can set up a white point. So, white point the first we, we in in this case, we need to set up, we say button is the end gain layer because there's a duration issue in get nitride based material. Mm -hmm. In other material, it's fine, but in nitride based, you, 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 you need to know that the button should be the end gain, I mean the buffer, substrate, and the going up. Otherwise, the polarization will be wrong. Is that okay? So, so the first point we say start from y is zero. It's not necessary to start from zero, but it should be on the button. You can also set up a sapphire layer in the future, like a 500 micrometer sapphire, if you want. <laughs> or if you want, sometimes you will need. For example, if you want to start the light situation, light situation is also included in the 2D program, so you can do a light situation. So you may need a sapphire layer. Okay, so the first point is 2, then 3, then 4. Okay, let's jump out the window. 2, 3, 4, and uh, the quantum well is 4003. Oh, sorry, the, the unit is micrometer, not, not Armstrong. A little bit different. Oh, yeah, wasn't And uh, then oh, the barrier thickness, what I say is 12. Yeah, 12 in the, in the definition. 12 is 4015 and then 4.018 and 4.030. Oh, we miss one day, one more point. That's fine. We can increase later. And then EPL is sorry, it's it's fine. EPL is uh, thirty nanometer, so it zero po four point three thirty nanometer. Sorry, so it's zero sixty and the four point one two one zero. Is that clear? Okay, uh, <laughs> the nine is the electron blocking area, right? So Which one? The, the nine point zero is the beginning of the electron blocking area or the end of the electron. Which one? Uh, the ninth, ninth point. Ninth point is the e this is EPL. Okay, eight, so to, and eight, eight to nine is EPL, and nine to ten is the PGAN. And then PGAN on top of PGAN. the PGAN. 
Is that okay? All right. Step back to the table. All right. And then in here, you can see that we need to make a hole here. Mm -hmm. So we need to, there's a function that called empty session number. So we need one empty session number. Mm -hmm. okay. So I need to make a hole one. So we choose empty session one, and it will ask you what's the shape. So usually, typically, it's a rectangular shape and just one. And uh, if you click this, it will tell you the definition of F1 to F4. S left here, S left, Y button, S right, Y top. So there's a hint here. How do you add the layer? Here. Empty session number one. Okay. What S one two three? Here. Okay. So we want to make, for example, we we want to make an empty session from sixty to ninety. So S left is sixty. And the button is two, uh, sorry, three. And the uh, right is 90. And white top is 2.4 point, sorry, 4.8. Maybe 4.5, 4.4 is fine. Just larger than the white top. Okay. So if you plot the structure, it's something like this. You can click plot the structure. When you click to plus, uh, you know? huh? plus structure. Plus structure here. Yeah. Okay, so if if your price is right, you should see the shape is out. Okay. And there is a button called Make Real Mesh. So you can click Make Real Mesh. The program will call the DDCC to generate a real mesh. And then you can plot the mesh. The real mesh is like this. In your setting. Plot. Gen make real mesh and the plot mesh. Mm -hmm. And then you look, this is your mesh. And then you can find that the mesh is like this. Okay. Did you? Any problem? Okay, so in this mesh, you, you will find some problem. Is that this is a big mesh, and then you find it becomes suddenly becomes a small mesh. 
and uh, the, the the mesh between this mesh it change very fast. Mm. It's not a good mesh. Also, if you check this, see this? It's a very this is a very large mesh, and then it become very very small, very quickly becomes small. So this kind of mesh is not a good mesh. It will cause a huge numerical error. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good mesh. But anyway, you can it, you can check the mesh by make real mesh and the part mesh by these two comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let me introduce all the function first. Then the contact contact we have three contact. Is that right? Okay, so we have content number three. Okay, and then the content here, the content, there are two kinds of content. One is top content and one is button content. So it will ask you the content number. The content number three means that we have three content. And if you say button content is zero, then all the three content are on the top. Mm -hmm. If you say button content is one, then the rest two are on the top. And this content is very interesting. It's, it's just like you deposit the metal. So if your content is from here to here, then you will automatically cover this area. Mm. And then you put the content here, then you, you will just put on this. So this is a, this is just a line content. And uh, there's also another new function called area content. Area content is that you set up a range, for example, like this this mesh, you can set up a contact like this. Then the program will automatically find the surface. You will not cover the range, you just find the surface that's cut the surf air surf surface cover the, the 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 cover in the in the rectangular range you want to assign. This is usually used for for example if you add a hole here and you set context inside, then I don't know if you can make that, but it's possible yes. because right now the 3D, 3D IC is something like that. Okay. Yeah, but just, it's not, you put the metal and then you bound into, yeah. so you, you can put something like that. Mm -hmm. So that you will have some contact like this. Okay, so we have three contact, then, uh, for the p-type and the n-type, we say the contact is from 0 to 10, and then 70 to 80, and then 140 to 150. So they need to be in the same uh, order, or can we reverse, for example, the 3 by the 2? Oh, you can reverse, can, yeah, it's fine. It's so it's like a gen source gen gen source you can also use get but get you need to define the barrier like yesterday we said but gen you will it will determine the, the contact point depending on your doping you automatically adjust the metal work function position depending on the contact points uh, doping so you you can use gen it's much easier then using the source. All right. So if you okay, if it's okay, then you plot the structure again. You will see three contact position of the contact location of contact. Okay. So this is the mesh setting here. You almost done, except the mesh is not a good mesh. Okay. All right, so after this, let's go back to the mesh. The mesh uh, in here, the definition is that at the point one to two is zero to 10, and the NDIV means that we cut it as 10 points. In this region, we cut 10 points. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how we cut is using uniform, uniform cutting. Mm -hmm. So it's just like equi equi space, equal space cutting. And uh, for 10 to 60, the distance is even larger, but you still cut 10 points, okay? And then the same, 
So initially program set up 10, 10 grid point. Mm. So how, how to improve this? It, depend, it, it depends. In the later road duration, the electric field is not changing so rapidly. So you, you won't want to make a very, very dense mesh. Otherwise, the program will become very time consuming because the lateral duration is like a 150 micrometer. If you want to cut two Amstrong like yesterday, I don't think your computer can run, run the simulation. So probably usually we'll stay uh, in LED case. I mean, in, in hemp case, probably not. In LED case, probably we set up like a 0 0.5 micron in the in the point or maybe we set up the um, one micro if you want to save time so today we only set up one micro so that means that you can use here I want the minima ds to be one micro I put one I put one I put one okay so you can see that the program automatically updated the division point. It becomes 10, 50, 30, 50, 10, 10. So you can make it a real mesh again. And then you can plot the mesh to check if it's working. You can find it's very uniform in the S direction. Is that okay? Hmm? Before it didn't continue. Not working. Mm -hmm. You can change the value again and then select two. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Ah, yeah. you can, ah, okay. Like, if you, you didn't change, then you won't activate to recalculate. Mm -hmm. the... No, I think it's because I made it here. Oh, you made here, then, yeah, then no, that's no, not working. Yeah. 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 That one is just a like a cell copy pass, so it, it won't work. Okay. All right. So if if you check, then the 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 mesh in the S direction is uniform. Okay. Finish. Then in the Y in the Y direction, we have some problem. Y direction you cannot make it uniform because the only way. We, we said yesterday that in the quantum well, in the y direction, you need to cut it very in the very fine mesh. So you you mesh probably two or three Armstrong. But you cannot cut all the region to be two or three Armstrong. Otherwise, you will have too many points. So it looks like you need a gradual mesh. Gradual mesh means that in some unimportant area or some position that the electric field is weak then you can put the mesh to be large and in some important area the mesh to be small however the, the change of the mesh size should be gradually changed that will reduce the numerical error so then we can do something like this there's a method we can change choose the gradual mesh or bump mesh and what is gradual mesh okay let's give an example for 0 to 2, gradual mesh, you can sub, set up the mesh ratio. For example, if you set up 1.2, okay, it will tell you the minimum dy is 0 0.07 and the maximum dy is 0 0.39. So what does that mean? Let's look at the real structure, then you probably have some feeling. Okay, so if you plot the mesh, Okay, here. This is the first layer, and then look at the mesh. You can find the mesh become small to large, gradually become large. Do you know what I mean? That means that you increase the mesh size from bottom to top by the ratio of 1.2. So you continue to increase the dimension. Okay, so if you change 0.8, we can make it a real mesh again. Then you plot the mesh. 
Then you look at here, you can see the mesh become dense, yes, more. Okay, so how, how we assist you to decide this is that usually in a button is not very important region. So probably we set up like a, in the two micrometer range, I say I only want the minima dy to be 0 0.1. Okay, I say here, in the required minima dy, I say I want 0 0.01. Okay. When I say 0 0.01, you will calculate according to this. For example, 0.01 mela. Okay. See this number? You can look at here. If you say 0 0.01, it becomes 18. If, if you say 0 0.0. 001, it becomes 28. It will help you to calculate how many grid points you need to cut according to this mesh ratio. If you want to require the minima, minima, we decide by the minima, not the maximum. It will automatically calculate. So, in at least two micrometer, I think this is not important region because they are all n-type layer. So we say we want to require resolution is 0 0.01 okay then for the second we also want the gradual change then we say we want the required minima y is 0 0.001 and I forgot to set up the, the ratio, so I say ratio is also 0 0.9. Then I change it again, 0 0.0011. Oh, you always need to re retype this to help you to to choose the the, the, the NS. Because you only only when only you you will only recalculate when you change the value mm -hmm. in this in this column. Okay. Okay. Look that in this case is required resolution is here. So this is 0 0.1, but our minima is 0 point here. So maybe I change here to 0 0.1. So that way I can make a good connection between these two. Okay, so we make a real mesh again. We can always double check. I think you should frequently check this to see if it's working. See, from 0 to 2, it gradually becomes more dense. And the 2 to 3, it becomes very dense. You can see it's very, very dense. OK. All right. Is that OK? Yeah. So this is three micron, and uh, three to four. Three to four is because we have contact. So usually in the contact, in the z direction of contact, we need to set up very dense because there is a contact potential change here. So if it, y direction should be dense, but in this region is still an un gain region. So this in this region actually the field didn't change too much. And uh, from here to uh, quantum well, quantum well is very small re range. So when you go to quantum well, your resolution needs to become dense yes. again. So what we need is dense now and uh, uh, become larger space and then dense. So we can use bump. Use bump. Okay. So if you use the bump command, and you want it become uh, you want small, large, small, so the ratio should be one point uh, larger than one because you want to become large and then become small. So you automatically, if for example, if you put up one point one and the required resolution is Let's say 1e minus 4, sorry, 2e minus 4. 
think I can make window larger. Okay. Okay. So I say I want the resolution is 2e minus 4. Then you will calculate that all the point you need is 160 and we make a real mesh again. See, you can see that the resolution is become dense, loose, dense, dense, dense again. Okay. Then finally, is quantum well. Quantum well and the quantum barrier. So quantum well is three nanometer. So it's very important region. So usually, why not keep the dense mesh? So we use uniform, and usually I told I want the resolution is two m strong. So I calculate it to be fifteen. And we run, we want the mesh to be uniform in the quantum level. It's not necessary, but if you put uniform, that's that's error. If you want to put the dense, loose, dense again, it's yeah, also it's fine. It's okay. It's a clever machine. You can mesh everything in uniform if you want. Mm -hmm. It costs you a huge amount. Of but we want the quantum law to be uniformly considered by the software. So you are uniform mesh. You can use uniform mesh. And if we use bump, it's gonna change something. Change something. Hmm. If you use something like a fluctuation case, probably you will affect it. But oh, okay, for yeah. here, you use normal quantum well. So the composition in this layer is almost the same. Okay, I see. Super. So it's so it's fine. <laughs> you know. So in the but but since this is very thin. So use uniform screen. I mean, it. This is very thin layer. It's not necessary to, to do a bump again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand. Okay. All right. So in a quantum well, we say we want require device two m strong, but in a barrier, barrier is twelve nanometer. So if we still require this, you will cut. You will need a lot of point. So here that in a barrier, we can use the bump again. And then we set up a ratio to 1.1 and the required minus 4. So it's something like this. And then in the quantum well, again, uniform 2e minus 4. And uh, this is a barrier, barrier again, bump 1.1. And the 2e minus 4. And then this is the EBL. EBL we use also use bump 1.1 2e minus 4. And also we will, we will frequently use bump 1.1 and the 2e minus 4. Okay. So let this is the final mesh. Why we always use bump? Because after the N gain layer, we have a lot of different layer structure and the interface, one layer to another, you have material difference. So it's a very sharp interface. So your mesh cannot be your mesh cannot be too large. Otherwise the interface will be diffused out. So usually we will continue to use bump or uniform. We won't, we, we, we won't use the gradual yeah. actually. We will use bump, 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 bump. Because dense, loose, dense. Yeah, yeah. Only, only on a, on a, usually on, on a button we will, because button is not important region, so usually we'll use gradual. But you, you can still use bump. <laughs> it's dependent if you like or not. Then make real mesh. Check if everything is right. Plot mesh. Then you can find the mesh is become very beautiful. See, in the quantum well, you can find out we cut up. This is a two barrier. 
only in this very small region and then content well here is the content well there's a unit from 4, 4 to 4.003 this is a unit for mesh position and you can find that all the mesh are continuously there is no abrupt change in the mesh if your mesh is right okay all right so this is the final mesh you can check if your value is the same as mine if you make a right mesh you are almost on the right way <laughs> to finish this Actually, you are 60% done. <laughs> the rest part is not too difficult. It's rest part is like two, one DDDC. Okay. Actually, this is a very good match. It's not a good example for practice now. <laughs> because it will take some time to run. So maybe later I will change the resolution <laughs> to make it faster. All right. Can you give us just a uh, few seconds again? We don't have to see that it's in like five minutes to check. Yeah. Yeah. When you type, you cannot retype the same value, otherwise it won't recalculate. So if you want to ask him to estimate the, 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 the NDIV, you need to change to one value first and then change it back, then you will recalculate. And you need to set up the ratio first, choose the method, set up the ratio, then the program will recalculate the DY. So the sequence should be the same. Hmm. 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 Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, the same. Yeah, that that's a problem that because the program won't detect you change your value, so you won't keep okay. it. So you have to change it to a different value and then change it back. I try I try that let him check every time, mm -hmm. but then the speed become very very slow. Mm -hmm. I mean the, everything delay. Mm -hmm. So but I think I will change this problem when we have the Python version. That's Are you more, Python? Yeah. <laughs> it will be more efficient. Yes, much more efficient. <laughs> this one this one is a Java is Oh this is Java? This is Java. Oh. This is Java. Java is low, low level, right? Why, why would it be slow? Manab use Java. Oh. So there's the inter interpretation layer. Uh -huh. That's so, what making it slow. So this object is is actually Java. Like this is Java. Uh -huh. And uh, this is Java. But it's not directly calling the Java. It's in it interpret Manab. again through I mean Manab interpret this table to Java and the Java come back. So it's it's a kind of So so now you're building one purely in Python? <coughs> Yeah. The GUI, at, even the GUI. Yeah. Okay. No, any man no lab. Okay. We are trying to get rid of man. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Python two and three. Hmm? Python two and three. 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 Yeah. Since this is new program, we use this. Three. <laughs> <laughs> but most most libraries still work with two point seven. I know, but yeah. but I, we think that it's maybe two <laughs> or three years later mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's dead, and then you need yeah. to up, and then since this is whole new things, and then just go to three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. 
then let's go to so I think the match is finished sorry why is there a line in the match? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you didn't cut. You didn't cut the last point. So when you empty, empty section, you think you cut, but you didn't cut. That's a, that's a oh. Because of the last point, usually it happens that if you, for example, like your your final point is. 4.21 so you set up I want to cut 4.21 but in the program when you read in 4.21 is 14 points so it's not really 4.21 sometimes it's 4.2000 the program try to cut then he said okay the, the last point is not within this range so it didn't cut so you usually you need to choose a, a lot size and larger range so do i pick so do i go to empty section and i pick uh, empty section 422 or like me 4.4 okay <laughs> to avoid any possible problem i just mm -hmm. cut a large range okay okay all right so the second is that let's go to the material range setting. So there's a normal range and the spatial range, but typically we just need normal range. Normal range means the rectangular range. It's usually for you, it's very hard to get very spatial <laughs> shape of the range. So typically we go in there by there. So we have, uh, how many sections we have? 10 points, nine, nine, nine region, is that right? So we say we have a normal range 9. OK. So the range 9, the 9 range is that the first point is 0, 50. So OK. S left is start from 0. And S right is 150. So it's 0 to 150. Originally, I would ask you to minus 0 0.1 to 150.1 because this is the same problem, the floating point issue. Mm -hmm. but, to, but today, I just fix it. I, 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 I ask the program automatically add a little bit small value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so determine, think that uh, you, you may need just this point so for the largest to avoid. Otherwise, we will frequently see this problem. So you, if later you say that certain point cannot find, that means you are using the old version. Mm -hmm. Okay. So S Y range is very simple. Just copy and the past. Copy and the past. All right. This is okay. Then Y top and the Y button. There's a trick that like uh, here. We, we go back to here, mesh setting, and the Y point. Let's click the right button. We have this range, is that right? Yes. We directly copy it. Yes. So we copy. So we go into the material range setting, Y top. Okay. So Y top, Y top should be here. And then we copy it again. So this is, should be 2.21. 2 and then this, then white top, sorry. 2 point, so this, I'm wrong. 0. I think you know what I'm doing. But, but, but since that, sorry, since the, the point is, I mean, you have 10 points, and then you want to set a range. The range is nine, nine, 9 range, so you need to shift, shift for top. Top is starting from 2 to 221. Button is from 0 to 406. How do you decide the other one? Is it just on this side? Hmm? Yeah. Oh, OK, no, I see what you mean. Yeah. Hmm. 
Is that okay? I decided it's simply because we define a layer position already. So step back. Okay, I call this project example one, 2D ES1. Okay, I call the project name. Okay, so here product range. You can plot the range again. Can you see this? And then you can amplify it to see if this is right. And you can see this uh, quantum well, quantum well, barrier, EBL. Yeah. You can make it a file, continue to make it a file like, like what I'm doing. Is that okay? And if you feel it's too large, just report and you'll go back. All right, so you finish the second step. It's much faster. <laughs> just set up a range. And then you find that you don't need to set up this because it's empty. So you set the same layer, but there's no mesh here. So it just simply neglect. Okay. Mm, Yuren, why could, couldn't we invert the two steps? We could create the material first and then the mesh second. Can we? Uh, it's hard to check. Yes. You don't have mesh, so how could you check this? This is based on the mesh. I mean, prod, if you want to prod the, the material, make real mesh, you need to do this. You can do this first. Mm -hmm. Then go to mesh, but the third step need to be the last. Yes, yeah. yeah. But usually going to mesh is better because you can check in every step mm -hmm. to make sure everything is right. Why is your initial uh, volume square in the corners? The, the, the bottom corners? Oh, okay. that's fine. It's, it's not. It's just mm -hmm. I try to cut something then. Mm -hmm. and that's a little bit. Bucky. <laughs> uh, one more question. Can you stripe? Is that okay? Hmm? Why do you change your color? I, I didn't. <laughs> I, I clicked plot and that's what came out. Oh, the, your range is not enough. Uh, how do you mean? Here, if you originally setting is like this, your plot structure is blue, then we cover the range. And then you didn't cover the whole range, so you, you left something blue. Mm. So you can check that if your can range, time, your range, mm. your range may may not be right in certain distance. Mm. So to see if your white top ended for two point four point two one, or maybe your mesh is too large. Oh, I see the problem. Okay, so I think I got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, at, at this step, save the project. <laughs> you are almost done, so it's better to save now. <laughs> to prevent crash. <laughs> okay. So we have a nine range. Then the third step is very simple. Generate a region because we set up a range. So you, you, you cannot manually type range uh, region here. This region is depending on material range. So you cannot say anything else. So you just generate a region, it gives you nine region. Okay. Alright. So now this nine region is that they are all we can say Indian gain nitride. Let's make a copy. It's in gain. They are all in gain except this one is argon. And then the quantum well, I think it's uh, here, 0 0.15. And uh, another quantum well here. And the uh, alumina gain nitride 1.01. Is that okay? 
and this one actually yeah, you can change back but if you like you, you can simply type alumni again actually. okay then doping the first three layer is n-type so we say my what 5 e 18 in the three layer and then it's impurity 1.0 e 17 okay we say if it's impurity I put here not not like yesterday sorry mm -hmm. I'm sorry the, the substrate is on the ninth layer that's it's wrong right. yeah. <laughs> but it's fine as long as it's in gain natural layer the calculation will be right and then that's the I mean the latest size is the same, so oh. the program will will be fine. <laughs> but you are right, choose here. <laughs> Click here. Okay, you are right. Okay. Impurity 1.0 E17. Okay, and the P layer minus 1.0 E18 minus 2.0 E19 minus 2.0 E19 and then the activation energy 180 200 oh sorry sorry there's a big problem here this is EV <laughs> so sorry 0 0.2 0 0.180 okay anything else oh here 0 0.025, 0 0.025. Activation energy. I didn't put you, doping here, but I put impurity here. But you put some P dope on the last barrier. barrier. I said a little bit diffuse okay. to diffuse to the last barrier. Okay. So if everything right, set back to the table. Don't forget that we haven't generated the mesh yet. So we need to set up okay the polarization 0 50 percent. Okay, we generate the parameters. So if everything is right, you should get this this what this message. Okay. Alright, so check if if the parameter is right or wrong all right so everything is generated electron affinity composition generation OJ radiative all right so the next step is that you usually you, you don't forget to change mobility okay so if we don't want to change we keep it and also the non-radiated lifetime, the typical gain nitride right now in the fitting is not this value. Usually, it's it's longer lifetime. So typically, June will say five e minus a. Okay. So oh, just. I would must have the one D program yesterday. Hmm. And then the UIE hand that had 25 of the mm -hmm. shallow dome on it, mm -hmm. it calculated non-radiated mm -hmm. shallow dome mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in the program is depending on this non-radiated lifetime. Right, but it, does it take a density of dope or traps as well? No. No, no, it doesn't. It, uh, dope trap as another function. So that it just is carry density times lifetime. There's no. No. So no I should no. have said the lifetime is to something really big outside the bottom wall. I didn't want to that much. It's fine. You can set large or, or small, depending on. But it has nothing. I mean, the number right is decided by this lifetime. Okay. So you can set long or small by yourself. Okay, but it's not the program will not automatically help you to decide. Right, right, right. But it's not looking at the density of impurities or anything. It just, it just it's not. Uh, no, there is another function called trap. Mm -hmm. The trap the, here impure here impurities is, is actually we call impurity here. 
it's actually just like a, a full activate charge. Okay. It's just in the program itself, it's just like a charge here. Okay. But there's another function that we can set up the, the trap. And then there's an additional trap lifetime okay. need to be set at that time. Okay. But if you don't set up, then the non radiated it is, is decided by this tau n and tau p. And that's it. It's not yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So anything else? So set back. And uh, in 2D program, you will automatically fill OJ coefficient, so you don't need to fill. But you can change the value by yourself. All right, so let me see. Okay, let's go back. You can plot the range again. And then, and then if you don't choose anything, you can click here. There's a, a special function is that you can magnify it and then unclick and check if the parameter is right or wrong. You can check here. This is a region. If you click here, it tell you this is a region three doping activation impurity. You can make some check here. Okay, so if you finish the basic setting, we can start to run. The first step is that you need to tune the voltage. Okay. Hmm? We've got an error message, which is not a sign region, so this one. Mm -hmm. Probably just click on the line. Uh, so you need to magnify it further, or, or maybe it's too small, so okay. your mouse is not. Yeah, it's a small. Like, um, for, for the line of test region, blah, 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 can we change uh, parameters directly from here, or can we go back? Yes. No, 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 just go here. This is just a message. I think you cannot edit. <laughs> that's, my, that's my problem. I should disable the edit. <laughs> OK. It's useless to, it's just a message. Message nine. Hmm. Okay. Any problem? All right. So we set up the drain and the source. So we need to tune the BIOS. The BIOS should not be VG. It should be VD. So we need to set up the range to run. So in the first step, we run zero voltage. Just check okay. everything is right because it's the fastest converge case, and we we'll, we can also estimate the speed. Also, in the the second thing is the landscape. Since we are working on landscape, you should know where is the landscape. Landscape is here, mm -hmm. hidden in the Schrodinger of uh, potential these two. Mm -hmm. Here you can turn on the landscape here. It's in the Schrodinger of uh, region. I should make it shift it to left, and this thing push back to here. Okay, so it's here. Maybe in the new version you will shift, but I think you can find it. Just check every panel. <laughs> okay. I try to make it to be a more up obvious position. <laughs> but right now it's it's just put here. Okay, so let's say you don't need to set shocky barrier because you don't set up gen content. So uh, sorry, get content. So you don't need to set and the error, shaky barrier, VS, reference voltage, you don't need to change. Oh, there's a special function is that if you use, the program right now is using the band of say ratio, like 63% for aluminum gain, nitrogen gain, nitrogen, indium gain, nitrogen gain, nitrogen. But you can also fully use work function and the electron affinity. If you want to use this, you need to click use metal wall function and the electron affinity. Then here you don't set up the shaky barrier, it's set up the work function. So the reference point is going to the infinite, I mean the, the free L surface. So from zero and you decide and uh, 
okay so there's a hidden parameter here this is affinity if you don't click this this will not be used if you click this this will be used do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes using a electron affinity is much easier because in certain case, usually for anomia gain nitro gain nitro, it's okay because the ratio is very constant, like anomia gain. But if you put the anomia gain nitride secant dioxide, is that right? And then indium gain nitride and the, uh, for example, gain nitride, a lot of material in together, the balance of set ratio will be this to this, this to this, this to this, everyone, everything is different. Mm. So at that time, it's better to use electron affinity because it will automatically calculate. Mm. Then if you use electron affinity, you can avoid the, the, the inconsistency of the position. Okay. But in the same material system, then we can simply use the Band of set ratio. Band of set ratio is setting is here. This 0 0.63 0 uh, here. So for this, okay, oh, there is a function here. Focus panel. Focus panel that you can just remove. <laughs> make your window larger. So there's a, there's a tricky, tricky button. Okay, so just help you to, for example here, look, it's about easy to look, but if you use this, then make it more clear to watch the setting. Okay, so let's go back and the focus panel. Okay, so, then the final step is generate input to see they will generate two input file one is the mesh file definition of mesh and the second is the input file so if everything is right if everything is right you, two files should be generated if you only generate one file that means it, gener it has some problem to generate a second file if you didn't see any file generate, that means your setting have something unreasonable that program cannot generate. Okay, so save the file, save project again. So you don't remove the ticks on the use meta function? Which one? The, oh, yeah, the, the, the bounce, you say it's useless in this case, if you use the use metal function. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should remove, sorry. Mm -hmm. Save again. Okay. We don't use all function here. Mm. Alright, so that's wrong. I, I don't know if my mesh is too dense or not. It's the time to compare the speed of your computer to see if you're running faster than me. <laughs> okay, I don't know if it converges or not. I think probably okay. It's, it's input file does not come up over here. What? Can you run? And run, and run. Okay, I finished. Ah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> I win. You <laughs> <laughs> can't run it. What kind of problem? Uh, it says. Error set up from a simple problem. Oh, yeah, it's the same problem. Is that old version? Okay. I, I, got it, I got it from your website, like just now. Mm -hmm. Just now? Yeah. So what do I do? It, it means it tell you that the point. Which point? Zero and zero. So it's on the left left button region. So that's the region one. It's set up a little bit larger region. Oh. In in this it told you that your problem is this point. Mm -hmm. So in your range setting 
the first software is that you can put here mm -hmm. Y button did you set up zero yeah and then you can put minus 0 0.1 mm -hmm. and uh, okay. as def you can say minus 0 0.1 to 151 it's fine because your match is only 0 to 150 yeah. so if you set up a larger range it won't affect anything so that can solve your problem. Okay. But it should not happen. I mean, I fixed the problem, so yeah, I don't know why. I, I got it just now. Yeah. Probably when you update, you, you didn't choose cover the whole file, old file. You extract it. So should I go to your website and then download right now, right? Now, is, is it on the website or? Yeah, and when you download, it, you, it's try the file you ask you if you want to. No, I delete everything. Oh, so weird. <laughs> I think everyone is okay, is that right? Yeah. So uh, the new I also have some, some small bugs, but it doesn't affect the uh, generation. So, <laughs> what uh, kind of bug? Whenever I go to a new session, like there's nothing here until I put my cursor <laughs> and then click this. Oh. <laughs> and then I can uh, okay. It's still. It's still doing the same thing. It's still I mean, you need to change everything in the S left to, to S right, ah. and the uh, Y button and the Y top, top. Okay. right top. Four point two two something like this. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to the result session. So if your running is right. Double click the 2D FET file. And uh, okay, so we, do, we don't go to 2D FET first. We go to the parameter check. 2D parameter check. Okay, so you choose the mesh. TRI file is the mesh file. The real generating mesh file is this TRI file. Remember that if you run a lot of different programs, you need to choose the right one. Also, this is uh, the same parameter file. So in this, you can check first is the region number. So you have one to nine region. So look at it, if the color is right or wrong. Okay. And uh, you can also check band gap. So in the quantum well, look at that. This is a gain nitrous three. 3.4 is this, and this, this is EBL, and uh, gain I try, in gain, gain I try, you can check everything if it's right or wrong. Is that okay? And then you can also check the dope. Okay. I think this is just a basic check to make sure the program really read what you assigned. And then you can check everything. I mean, tau n, tau p, what you assigned, typically the same. I mean, they are all... <laughs> okay, it's it's a certain very small range, but the scale bar is too large. Okay. Can you have a screen bar online? Just click this. Yeah, color bar. Okay. Alright, so if if everything is right, let's go back to 2D FET file. And the 2D FET file, because it's 2D, so you cannot plug everything together. Not, it's not like 1D. So what you can plug is like EC, okay? So you plug EC is like something like this. Okay, and uh, you can see this. And you can make a turn. Okay. Oh, okay. Here. Now you see. Do you see the content well here? <laughs> Not easy. Okay. Don't worry. We still have another function. Click, click, rotate, rotate button, and then you can rotate it. Okay. Actually, if you use hold on, 
then you plot EV. EV is EV is in here. I don't know if you can get both at the same time. I, let me check. <laughs> yeah, you got you got it. Did you see that this is not easy to watch, but <laughs> this is EC and this is EV. So you plot it EC and EV. You, you no, you, yeah, you put hold on and then plot, choose another. Can you see this? Hold on mm -hmm. and then you click EV and plot again. Then you see you see two together, but mm -hmm. actually it's useless to watch. I mean, it's very hard, difficult to, <laughs> to understand. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, so let's go back to EC. All right. So when you look at this EC, you probably want to know the z direction so you can plot along the z y direction and uh, along which point the comment here so if you want to look at uh, 0 0.00 maybe 0 0.005 so you choose 0 0.005 the unit is centimeter okay. <laughs> The result, all the output becomes CGS. <laughs> okay, so if you look at this, you can see this. Of course, you you feel it's very strange, but don't worry. Just change the scale. You see the quantum well. Can you see the band structure here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Use the hold on. You can also plot EV. We got some problem, but that's fine. Before, let's plot EV and then hold on, plot EC, then make magnify later. Okay, then this. All right, so we got EC and EV. Okay. Then we can plot Fermi level again, EFN and the EFP. This is zero bias, so EFN, EFP is. Are all zero? And uh, I don't know if yeah, but the labeling is not right. So you still can plot one D plot in certain cutting range. So if your mesh is good, you will find the quantum well looks good. If your mesh is bad, you cannot even see your quantum well. <laughs> <laughs> if you cut it in very uh, loose mesh, then you'll find where is my content well. Okay? Alright. And uh, you can plot the uh, carrier density, electron, hole, electron, hole density. So whole density is interesting. You can see there's a huge 2D HG, sorry, 2D HG in the EBL. So this is large 2D HG near EBL and the peak and K because there's a neck, there's a positive polarization charge mm -hmm. there. So you will attract more hole in this in this position. Also, what else? Because you, you just calculate zero voltage, so you cannot see the current. So there is no current. And uh, looks like everything is right. So if everything is right, we can start to run the IV. So let's say, go back. Let's say running VG from 0 0.7, VGN maybe. 0 0.0 and the VG step maybe 0 0.05 0 0.1 0 point uh okay let's save time don't go too many steps yeah. so we can 
check any error. <laughs> no, save. Okay, wrong. Save and wrong. Okay, let's take a break. Stop. <laughs>